Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So today I am going to talk about pulmonary embolism. How will you treat pulmonary embolism in ward or emergency? So we are having the algorithm. Point number one is calculate the will scores. That is will score for pulmonary embolism. And that score is already given uh, in the Medscape or you have to uh, memorize those points. And you apply the will score on a patient. Now this is very important. The will score calculation is very important in any patient in which you suspect pulmonary embolism because it guides our management it guides our management it guides us if that will score is equal to or less than four if the will score is equal to or less than four the d dimer is high sensitivity what does it means if it is more than four there is no role of d dimer if it is equal to or less than four d dimer has a role but it has high sensitivity only now we have to understand this high sensitivity mean if it is negative the d dimer test negative mean the d dimer is normal it means pulmonary embolism is ruled out if the fill score is equal to four or less than four and the d dimer is negative it rules out the pulmonary embolism and no further study is needed if it is positive it means if it is above the upper limit of the normal range that varies from lab to lab that means nothing and you have to do further investigations you have to do further investigations so it has only high sensitivity it has no specificity if it is positive it means nothing because even a, a single injection or IV line can raise the D-dimer significantly if that is more than four there is no role of D-dimer there is no role of D-dimer if it is more than four you have to do two things do investigations to confirm treat as well treat the patient investigate the patient now how would you treat the patient and how would you investigate the birds the algorithm the investigations and treatment now we are treating the patient as well as investigated the patient so the first investigation you are having the chest x-ray usually the chest x-ray is normal usually the chest x-ray is normal but the rare finding that you can see in the chest x-ray that is the Hampton's hump Hampton's hump mean if this is your x-ray and this is your lung so there is a white opacity a which shape white opacity this is actually Hampton's hump this is the lung this is a which shaped white opacity which shaped and this is actually due to massive infarction this is infarction in the in the pulmonary vasculature so that is the Hampton's hump next next is Wister mark sign the Wister mark sign is if there is pulmonary embolism of course the vessels are blocked so if the vessels are blocked and this is chest x-ray if you are seeing you see in a normal chest x-ray there are blood vessels extending from the hilum the Wister mark sign you cannot appreciate well on a chest x-ray and you can appreciate on the CT scan more but if you focus you can actually pick on the on, on, on this on the chest x-ray provided that the good quality film you are having so it means there are decreased vasculature so you are having vessels coming like that like that but there the vessels are missing because there is no flow if there is no problem this is called ologemia ologemia focal ologemia that means decreased blood flow so the Hampton's hump is massive infarction the Wister mark sign is the ologemia there is decreased blood flow the pleural effusion you can expect the pleural effusion in infarction and the atelectasis atelectasis mean collapse why there is collapse in the pulmonary embolism if this is the alveoli 
and this is the pulmonary vessel so if there is no blood coming toward this alveoli if there is no blood coming toward this alveoli what happens that portion of the of the lung collapse compresses why to move the air to the to those areas of the lung which are having good blood supply which are having good blood supply so the reason for atelectasis is, is that you are having no blood flow and you are having the air coming to that area so what happens that area of the lung that collapses to move the blood to those alveoli which are having normal blood flow so these four findings you can see but in majority of the cases if the question asks the chest x-ray is normal in the ECG the most common finding is sinus tachycardia in the ECG most common thing is sinus tachycardia the S1 Q3 and T3 pattern is neither sensitive nor specific it is neither sensitive nor specific now you are doing the Doppler ultrasound of the lower limb not for the confirmation that the that, that, there, there is pulmonary embolism you are doing this whether I should apply the IVC filter later on or not this is just for the IVC filter this is just for the IVC filter now coming on that side if the patient is not maintaining systolic BP if the patient is not maintaining systolic BP and there is no other cause for low BP now this is this is the main thing whether there is another risk factor for decrease in BP and you are presuming this that this decrease in BP is caused by pulmonary embolism you are wrongly diagnosing the patient and wrongly managing the patient so if systolic BP is less than 90 and there is no other cause for low BP this is massive pulmonary embolism this is massive pulmonary embolism if you have diagnosed massive pulmonary embolism what is the best next step assess the contraindication for thrombolytics is there any contraindication to the thrombolytics that I'm giving to this patient because you have to dissolve the clot you have to dissolve the clot if no give thrombolytics if no give thrombolytics if yes so no. if a patient is having massive pulmonary embolism and thrombolytics are contraindicated due to the risk of bleeding so the answer is interventional radiologist I refer to interventional radiologist for embolectomy to remove the embolus through a catheter to remove the embolus through a catheter and when is the answer the inferior when I give a filter if the anticoagulation is contraindicated because of the risk of bleeding or there is recurrent pulmonary embolism in spite of uh, anticoagulation therapy the patient is having recurrent pulmonary embolism and that is called anticoagulation failure so in these two conditions the answer is inferior vena cava filter and in this condition the answer is embolectomy so the next step is patient is pregnant or RFTs are deranged so you do VQ scan and if the patient is not pregnant and RFTs are normal we do CTPA that is CT pulmonary angiogram because we give contrast in the CTPA so in pregnancy that is contraindicated and if the RFTs are deranged we cannot give contrast so VQ scan is the answer when pregnancy or derangement in RFTs and CTPA is the answer person is not pregnant and RFTs are normal if the pulmonary embolism is massive that means systolic BP less than 90 you give thrombolytics but if the patient is maintaining the BP that is systolic more than 90 that is called submassive pulmonary embolism and the treatment in the submassive pulmonary embolism is the clexane and oxygen clexane in therapeutic doses and oxygen 
if the patient is not maintaining oxygen saturation then give oxygen if maintaining oxygen saturation then no need to give oxygen well the other thing i forget to mention is the abgs what would be the picture in the abgs in a case of pulmonary embolism the answer is respiratory alkalosis with type 1 respiratory failure type 1 respiratory failure if there is type 1 respiratory failure you are having decreased oxygen saturation if you are having decreased oxygen saturation there is hypoxemia and the, the person received decreased oxygen so what happens there is activation of a respiratory center in the brain to correct this hypoxemia to take in more oxygen so in order to correct the hypoxemia the respiratory rate increases so as to get more oxygen so while doing that the person wash out the co2 person washes out co2 and this leads to the respiratory alkalosis so type 1 respiratory failure with the respiratory alkalosis on abgs another commonly asked question is why in maceo pulmonary embolism there is low systolic bp let's suppose this is the pulmonary vasculature this is the pulmonary trunk and these are the branches of main trunk so what happens if there is obstruction at this level or this level so there is no blood coming toward this side if there is no blood coming toward the lungs pulmonary vasculature what happens there is no blood coming toward the heart if there is no blood coming or a very little amount of blood coming toward the heart what happens there is decreased blood in the heart in the left side of the heart in the left atrium if there is decreased blood in the left atrium there will be decreased blood in the left ventricle if there is decreased blood in the left ventricle there will be decreased preload according to the frank stalling law if there is decreased preload what will happen this decreased preload will cause decreased stroke volume if there is decreased stroke volume what will happen there will be decreased cardiac output if there is decreased cardiac output there will be decreased bp and if you give thrombolytics that quickly dissolve this clot and dissolve that and dissolve that now if a person is having contraindication to the thrombolytics uh, we discussed in the previous uh, slides that 